we both like pick our hair over to the side yeah we have to <laughs> match. have matching hair absolutely <laughs> My, i don't look as good as you when i'm doing it <laughs> you look great i'm here with natalie holt incredible composer of the disney plus series loki natalie how are you doing I'm really good, thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Likewise. Yeah, I've been absolutely over analyzing your music for the past couple months and living in it. Um, <laughs> probably the only person who didn't work on the show who knows these themes <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, but uh, before we get into that, pretty much every person and every review that has been coming out about this series is mentioning your score as like one of the reasons why it's so great. Uh, what have the past few weeks been like for you? Oh, it's been, it's just been amazing. I, it's, you know, it's so nice to kind of spend so long crafting some, something and then have people appreciate it. Because, you know, I've I've put this much effort into other things that have not been so successful. Sure. So, um, yeah, it feels just amazing to kind of have it be out there and listened to by so many people. It's amazing. Have you had any like uh, feeling like a celebrity moments? <laughs> Not really. It was kind of weird. Um, like I got to chat to Tom Hiddleston and, and he's like, oh, I love this score. It, it just felt like, oh, I'm meeting Loki. Like he just, he, <laughs> that was that was the most surreal moment. Yeah, I, think. <laughs> I heard he was like playing the your score on set, like walking around with a boom box because he loved the music <laughs> so much. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Well, and like having people do um, tribute versions of like yourself included, because I, I reposted your amazing trombone tastic version. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the <laughs> and, way. And just having all these people. Yeah, that felt I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this thing that's come out of my head is, is now <laughs> everywhere <laughs> playing it. It's bonkers. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's back up. You you get the call to do this MCU space epic thing, and you send them some stuff, and then you get chosen to be one of the few composers to actually do a demo of, I guess it was the elevator scene going into the, the time theater. Um, and you decide you're going to hire Charlie Draper and on the theremin and get all these live musicians. Um, what made you go so big? I do, I because I'm a violinist, so I tend to like play over my samples anyway, because my programming is not not great. Um, and so I think the things I'd usually send out for demos would be like have lots of live stuff on. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm if I was keen on the project, I'd kind of go to town on it. <laughs> but yeah, it just, it had the Loki theme in it. Um, that I that you know ended up being his theme. It didn't it didn't have the Ride of the Valkyries um, kind of rip over the top. Mm -hmm. That came in a bit later when I was doing the suite, and I just totally scored like wall to wall. I didn't give it any space, and and like if you watch, it'd be really funny to watch it back now. But just scored through the whole like when they sit down on the chairs and chat to each other. That's actually in silence in right. in the version that they used. But in my demo version, it was just like. When he went the high notes and the low notes, and I was like, Doo -doo -doo -doo. And, <laughs> yeah, I just scored through. So, um, yeah, it w the final version ended up being just a bit less than yeah, than my kind of over the top demo version. Is what you demoed uh, basically what ended up minus the stuff that they they pulled out? It, it kind of grew because, yeah, Marvel like to do everything live. Mm -hmm. They they like to kind of have orchestral sessions if it's an orchestral score. So. Um, those demo versions ended up, you know, just having loads of live elements added in and being mixed properly and stuff. Um, but we, we kind of had like a fairly small chamber orchestra because Kate originally, Kate Heron, the director, wanted it to be quite a synth based score. Mm -hmm. She she was kind of like, I don't think it's going to be very orchestral, hmm. but um, I, I kind of made it bigger and bigger and I wanted to have that kind of classical repertoire element in there to give Loki that kind of weight, you know, Shakespearean drama weight. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, the school kind of got bigger and bigger and we recorded with a kind of chamber orchestra in Budapest. Budapest? In like a fairly s small brass section. I think it was eight. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, it wasn't as big as, <laughs> it wasn't sounding as big as I had it sounding in my head. And I was like, can we can we book a bigger orchestra this for, for you know, this next um session and they were like yeah sure so we kind of doubled the strings and we um we doubled the brass section we had 16 and then i was triple tracking them sometimes <laughs> so okay. i was just like 
<laughs> that like, makes a lot of sense. That's, yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you do the orchestrations? What was the process to get it from you to Budapest? It's Budapest. So um, the conductor that I worked with there, Peter Pestic, mm -hmm. um, is also an orchestrator. I mean, I can orchestrate, I'm very slow. <laughs> and um, Peter's super fast and he you know, when you're kind of orchestrating something and you're also writing the next episode and you're checking the mixes and stuff, you just run out of time. Like, I'd love to be one of these composers. Like, I imagine John Williams probably orchestrates and conducts everything himself. Oh, yeah. But um, I just, you know, I've got a small child as well. So I don't know how people <laughs> manage to do it all. Yeah, <laughs> I not don't sleep. So he'd, he'd do them and then he'd send them to me and I'd, like, kind of, if he hadn't got something quite right, I'd tweak it. Um, and I'd just like go over it and, you know, I'd maybe revoice a couple of the chords or whatever, mm. or it'd be like, oh no, that was meant to be a viola tune or whatever. You know, I'd, I'd kind of go over the orchestrations, but yeah, he did the bulk of them. So you said there's this suite that you wrote of, with all the themes first. That's not in the show, is it? Well, pretty much like what, what I put in the suite yeah. um, is, is like the basis of all the themes that are in the show. Um, I think like the the Loki theme, um, the 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 opening credit, you know, the kind of David Cronenberg kind of black and white Loki that mm -hmm. comes up. <laughs> that was in the suite, um, and the variant theme as when when you go to Bakersfield at the end of episode one, mm -hmm. that that was pretty much the suite, but with some live strings. Got it. So there were some things that just came straight from the suite and went on because the editor had the suite. So, you know, they were just like putting those tracks in. And I see. Some of them played. Yeah. Hmm. This process was a little bit more of like a two way collaborative process. First of all, between you and Kate and you actually having these like creative ideas that made it into the show and, and changed what it was, as well as you to the musicians. It sounded like uh, like the Hardanger fiddle and some of those instruments you were kind of saying like, here's the melody, but play what would sound authentic on your instruments. Could you talk a little bit about like why it was more collaborative and uh, what that was like? I think Kate, um, you know, she, she was like, oh, I'm really bad with music. I don't know how to, you know, she doesn't have a musical language, but she has that, she has a kind of idea of what she wants. She had loads of musical references and, and actually she did have a really good musical language. Hmm. Like, I was just, it's like finding that way of communicating what you want that doesn't, that's not kind of going so much into musical terminology that you're kind of going over director's head. So I think it's kind of storytelling with music and, and Kate was amazing at that. And, you know, if I'd gone a bit off piste with a cue, like um, in episode six, when Kang is stabbed, I'd got done a huge, huge ending because I was like, this is the end. It's episode six. Yeah. It needs to be huge. And um, so like that whole sequence where she pushes Loki through the time door and then right through to the end, I just scored it like a giant symphony and mm. Kate watched it and she was like, no, <laughs> this needs to be, it needs to have space for people to, to just be confused and wonder what the hell's gone on. And mm -hmm. like, can you try stripping back? And once Loki's pushed through the time door, just like come out and maybe just like, let's have this one element here that ties it through and then that that turned into a cello solo. So she she knew kind of how to communicate with me, um, you know, and we and 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 then I'd do things, and then she was like, "Yes, that's exactly what I meant." So hmm. it's like finding that, you know, building that kind of um, conversation up, I guess. And in terms of the musicians. Um, I'd sometimes, I like w when I first um, did the variant theme for for Eric and Olav. I'd play it on the violin, and then I like write it out for them and say like, "Can you try some, try a version that's like as I played it?" And then if you want to try a version that's got more ornaments in it that are more kind of folk ornaments, because obviously I'm a classical violinist. So when I try and do those kind of <laughs> folky ornaments, it just doesn't sound very authentic. Um, and then the ones that where I'd said, 
can you kind of try try out the folky ornaments that were always the ones that I used because they mm. just had so much more character and um so I ended up just kind of sketching it on the piano and then being like do, do your magic <laughs> yeah oh it was great so using all of these themes to actually say what's actually going on on screen I mean I think about in episode six when Kang's like Sylvie could you even trust anyone and then Loki's theme plays like those kinds of moments are really fun to answer the questions but when did you decide to keep the the viewer in the dark yeah there was there was very much like Kate knew how much she wanted to say mm. and how much like oh you know she you know we kind of found that theme the Kang theme that ends episode six was like one of the first things I had for the suite as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point we were like, okay, he's behind the TVA the whole time. So we're like seeding that TVA theme and, you know, it's like the timekeepers are the have got that TVA theme. Yeah. And, um, but actually, you know, Miss Minutes has got the TVA theme coming in. And and, and then there's these moments where um, Miss Minutes is tempting Loki with, you guys could, you know, we could put you in the timeline and you could rule together. And uh -huh. then she teases him with his mother's theme. You want the Infinity Gauntlet? Yours. Kate had that in. Um, the the editor put that in. Wow. And they were like, we need, we want that from, a, we want to call back some things there to hmm. tempt him. Um, so that was Kate's idea to recall that theme at that moment. So she she'd kind of go through and tempt things in that I'd already done with the editor. Wow. So quite often when I when I got to episode 6 there were kind of like lots of um you know signposts of of like what Kate wanted to seed and where already mm -hmm. put in. That's awesome. That's answering your question. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I yeah, <laughs> she was actually making some of those decisions. Um are you calling what I'm calling Sylvie's theme the is that what you call the variant theme or is that different? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a variant theme. Yeah. Because it was, that was kind of like the Sylvie's pain. That was kind of like her kind of anger and, you know, her frustration right. with, with her, the way she'd been treated and growing up in apocalypses from a child. Right. And I felt like, and, you know, that was kind of also, um, I used that in, episode one when Mobius was showing Loki his dark deeds and like mm -hmm. you you kill people and 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 so that connected to Sylvie as well of mm -hmm. like this is the, her murderous side and that mm. was also Loki's murderous side yeah so there's a moment when they're fighting in the timekeepers chambers where their themes kind of interact for the first time that I heard yeah Is that the only time that happens? Um, there is um, the fight in episode six where that happens as well. Okay. Because that fight in episode six recalls the timekeeper's fight. Okay, I'm going to play a couple of themes for you and I, I want to get your reaction. Okay? Okay. okay. Here's the first one. <laughs> What does that mean to you? That's that's the lamentous um, the the theme when they're they're running away from from the craters dropping in lamentous, um, and it was it was like a rhythmic kind of running cue that's like a spare version of the Loki theme. It's kind of missing a few of the middle notes, but yeah, it's kind of like a a sort of moving but a kind of moving along version of the Loki thing. I completely overanalyzed this one because it, it comes in first with B-15's entrance and then it comes in again when Mobius and Loki are talking about if they trust each other and I'm like oh all these pieces meet they line up <laughs> and I was like a madman analyzing this. No thing. no you're not a madman. There are loads of moments where I've like totally seeded themes and it's really thematically organized yeah but that moment um uh kate just loved that that um she really loved that version of the of the loki theme 
And um, I'd written a theme for B15, okay. which got scrapped. <gasps> it got scrapped. Um, and the B15 opening sequence got reshot really late on because um, they had some issues with episode one with, with people testing it. And there were some kind of issues with B15 coming out and how Loki, how Tom had played that. Like his, his reaction to them coming out was a bit like lighthearted and comedy. Mm. And they reshot it for it to be more serious. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'd I'd already scored it, and B fifteen had her own theme, which was connected to that um, rhythmic kind of. <laughs> kind of, right. you know, the more rhythmic kind of version of the B fifteen mm -hmm. theme, but that kate just put that in there and they were like that really works and i was like okay that that kind of doesn't make sense but whatever like i feel <laughs> so vindicated my... right now that i caught Sorry. it oh my gosh okay is that, is that... <laughs> no that's perfect now yeah i i'm gonna i'm gonna trust myself from now on okay so this one uh it's very tied to mobius and ravona i'm not so sure that's kind of ravona's theme okay and it's it's kind of on the organ because she's she's kind of the judge and her theme and mobius's theme felt quite connected mm -hmm. um and also because we don't know what happens to um ravona but she's definitely connected to kang as well so that's kind of my intrigue theme oh sorry so yeah that's that is ravona's theme on the organ um and it's a facet of her personality that's sort of mysterious and yeah. like what is her connection to Kang and mm -hmm. and is her friendship with Mobius all it appears to be. It also starts out in um, the like 1500s France with the organ. We we hear that when Mobius is kind of entering uh, as yeah. well. Yeah. In the in the church. Yeah. That's that must have been really yeah. fun for you to play around with like this period specific sound. But with Jack Lama playing like this like guitar. Yeah, I love that. And then um the like Renaissance Festival, like the the fake out with that one. That also went through loads of different um versions of, of um source music. Mm. Cause it was like, should we try and tease people that this is like actually a medieval thing? And yeah. then like what the hell? It's got eighties music on it and like messing with people a bit with the with the time. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah that was that was a fun moment to play around with so there's this loki theme which is it's the like high-pitched it happens in when they're dragged away when they when they get taken off lamentus yeah exactly and then they're being dragged down the corridor it's the loki theme really slowed down on a piano that's that's like a prepared piano that's really pitch shifted yeah. and put through a tape machine <laughs> but it's a version of the it's like a really tragic version of the loki theme yeah so okay yeah. i was i was wondering why it was being played when like miss minutes was was lying to sylvie and it sounds like that was a that was another kate decision i feel like i'm finding all the kate decisions i'm like yeah kate, mm. yeah, kate put it there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> found it <laughs> Uh, the melodies that you had Charlie play in like the um, the love theme and the the first look cue when we first see the TV eight like the most heartbreakingly beautiful melodies I've ever heard. Oh my oh, god! Yeah, well, and also if you're only as good as the musicians playing your music, right? Mm. So I just feel so lucky to have you know had all these amazing musicians that played my music i'm very lucky it was so so great also uh the love theme is pitched up a semitone in the in the last episode was that are you somebody who makes those decisions deliberately or was that just where it ended up i was gonna reuse the cue and not bother to record it again right but um it had an open c and it was like da, 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 um on the, in the cello section and actually i felt like having the open strings on just made it sound a bit um I don't know, pesante or whatever the, the phrase is. And mm -hmm. I, I thought it would sound better if it started on a D because then they'd have that, they could put vibrato on the note and it would sound more romantic. Mm. So I, it was a decision to pitch shift it up because I thought that being able to vibrato on the D would make it sound more romantic. And actually 
I was happier with it at semitone up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I I thought it was definitely like a. It felt like some sort of an arrival point uh, because yeah, of it was. Theme. It was meant to be like um, the biggest sort of most romantic version of that theme, and so it seemed to sound better on a D. Tchaikovsky would be jealous. It was so <laughs> so beautiful. Okay, last one. It's uh Oh, of course, where B15 gets her um memories given back to her. So that was that was kind of like the um B15 memory theme actually. But wow. I used it, yeah. So and it's it's Sylvie's enchantment power. That was that was that kind of theme. Yeah, yeah. it comes back when we like enchant Eliath and all of that. Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of the choir and, and Eliath, did they have any lyrics that they were singing? <laughs> oh my god, yes. I, I was hoping know. no one ever asked me what they were. Well, I'm <laughs> asking you. Um, oh my gosh. I, I really, I feel like a bit protective of those lyrics. Okay, cause... then just tell me why you're protective of it. You don't have to tell me what they are. Well, because they, uh, they, I kind of, um, I started off with like a, with, uh, a Latin, like I was looking at thing, uh, this Latin um, kind of phrase about which had some m meaning of, of kind of like being who you are and discovering different sides of yourself mm -hmm. in Latin. Um, but then it just didn't work with the with the phrasing of the notes. So then I kind of put it into Bulgarian mm. and. So yeah, it, it's because the choir were Bulgarian, but ended up being a bit modified to, to fit the music as well. Sure. So I'm not totally sure it makes 100% sense. It probably makes as much sense as the as a Norwegian person listening to Tom Hiddleston right. singing that song in episode three. My relatives all live in Norway and they were like, we don't understand. Because <laughs> I was like, he's sung, he sung in um, Norwegian and they, they listened to it and they're like, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, so you have written the the Kang theme now. You're the first person yeah. to do it. How would you feel about other composers using your theme in, in like the upcoming films and stuff? And do you think they even would? I'd be really sad because I want to do. I want to score things with Kang in because I loved him. I loved writing for him. I just I loved episode six was my favorite thing to score. I just. It just came out so fast as well because yeah. I was so into it by that point, point. Um, and I just love Jonathan Majors. I thought he was incredible. So I'd be sad if someone else was using it because I wished it it would be me. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'd also be happy that I'd written it. I guess. Yeah. I mean, if somebody writes a different theme for it, I'm gonna be mad. So <laughs> <laughs> so one of us is gonna be upset. <laughs> yes. Okay. In episode six, the like amen moment with. I don't know, it, it starts out with him going like, right, he makes this noise and it goes to the, like we finally get. Yeah, he's like, his... and then it exploded. The peace between realities. <laughs> Erupted into all out war. He gave that speech um, without any, without any score, obviously. Yeah. And I just felt like it, I could hear the music underneath it. Yeah. Um, and it was so fun to kind of time it all to go with him. And then when he sang, oh, man, and have the choir singing along with him. And then the timekeepers came along and saved us all. Oh, it's meant to be his requiem, basically, because he's giving his backstory. And it's like all the themes that you've heard coming together. And in fact, they edited the scene down a lot. It was like two minutes longer or something. Wow. Um, maybe not even that much, maybe a minute and a half, but it had more information, which they had to remove because it was too spoiled. But it, it kind of got into a point where it went back to the missed minutes. Um, and that is in the second part of the album. Yeah. The track B contains the full version of it. Oh. If that makes any sense. Yeah. The, the, the version is called B and it's like a longer version of the Requiem that oh. I originally did 
And I liked it so much that I just recorded the longer version and then cut it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it kind of went through a few more, a few more kind of, um, yeah, revealing things that he was talking about that it went with. But obviously they cut it down. But yeah, it's there in, on the album. So did Jonathan Majors do the Amen in that key, like when he originally yeah, yeah, filmed yeah. it? Oh, yeah. so you just had a field day with it. Yeah, I did. I think I... It, it was it was kind of a I think it was a semitone down from from the thing before and the thing afterwards. I but I didn't pitch shift it. I did it in in his. He just sang that without anything. He was he didn't have my piece at that point, and I wrote the piece afterwards, and then and then used his pitch to it's so good. The piece. Um, for season two, uh, I'm gonna expect you back. I know we we don't know anything yet, but. If I'm you're not, not allowed back, to say. I know you're not allowed to say. I'm allowed to say if you're not back, well, there's going to be fights. Um, <laughs> and by the way, I think. Do you know what they should give the job to you because I think you're you're the person who has analyzed it the most. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm happy to be on scene to be like, actually, uh, you can't use that theme there because we used it back in Avengers two. No, um, <laughs> I I will say the trombone pairs very nicely with a theremin. That's all I'll say about that. Um, I did, I did, my, I used the bass trombone for that Loki theme, you know, like triple tracked bass trombone section. Like there's got six bass trombones there. So good. I so think good. you should be in that section. There we, we go. Should, have you got a bass trombone? <laughs> I'm right here. I've got it. I'm ready. Ah, <laughs> I'm ready. Great. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm set. You can fly to Budapest. <laughs> I'll fly a Budapest. It's Budapest. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, you've been so generous with your time. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Bye. Bye.